What if you can't sell your contract to a wholesale buyer? What do you do? And what are some things that you can do in preparation so that you don't get in that situation? First of all, what happens if you have a contract on a property that you're trying to assign that contract for a fee and you can't find somebody to pay you for that contract? Well, there are a couple of different things going on here. One, have you locked in that contract at a price that is too high so that wholesalers aren't going to be able to make the spread they need to be making in order to pay you an assignment fee for that contract? Now, first and foremost, how many cash buyers are you contacting about this contract? And do you already have these relationships already established so that you know exactly what it is their buying criteria is? First, if you're just reaching out to cash buyers after you've got a contract, you don't have the relationships yet, you don't know what their buying criteria is, that is shaky ground. We want to know the exit strategy before so we can protect the downside so you're not wasting your time. So if you start to market a contract and you've talked to only a couple of cash buyers and they have said no, it could be that their criteria isn't going to match that particular deal, but maybe some other cash buyers criteria will match that deal. What does that mean? That means you may need to contact more cash buyers. So if you contacted only a couple people and they're saying, no, we're going to pass on this, don't stop there. Contact at least five cash buyers, maybe more, to see if they're all saying the same thing. If they're saying, no, we're not interested, then you might have to go back to the seller and renegotiate because you have locked in that contract at a price that is too high to wholesale that. Now, there are other exit strategies out there, but we are talking about wholesaling a contract at this point. Now, if you're wondering where you can be finding these cash buyers in your local market, you can be going to your local foreclosure and tax sale auctions where buyers are there with cash in order to buy houses. So you know those are cash buyers. You can also be reaching out to Facebook groups and see if there are cash buyers there, see what their criteria is as well. And then also you can be reaching out and contacting for rent houses out there because you know that there are people that are investors that have houses for rent. Now, if you've uncovered then just somebody who couldn't sell their house, they had to move on, they didn't want their house to say go to foreclosure, but they're tired of paying two different mortgage payments, you might find a motivated seller in a scenario like that. But in this case, we're really looking for some type of a rental house owner that might be interested in the property that you've got a contract on. So there are three different sources that of course you can be potentially finding a number of different cash buyers within. And my suggestion first and foremost is before you ever make an offer on a house, build the relationships with these cash buyers, knowing that if you want to assign contracts, you need to find the buyers and you need to find what they are paying cash for. What is their criteria? So that way, when you're structuring that contract, you know you're structuring it in a way that you're going to be able to sell that contract for a fee and assign it over to somebody. So that is really important to do first so you don't end up in the situation where you've got a contract that you cannot sell. Now, it's not the end of the world because you can always go back to that seller and renegotiate and then move forward, but having exit strategies in place, and in this case, cash buyers, wholesale buyers, that's really important. So that way you know when you're putting things together, you're doing it properly and you can start to scale build those relationships because these cash buyers want people that can bring them deals that they're looking for and they're willing to pay cash for the deal, for the contract, the assignment, however it is they are doing business. So you don't want to burn that relationship by bringing them a deal that is clearly not something that they're going to be interested in. You want them always to take your call, your text, your email seriously when you've got a deal because they know You've got something that they want and they know there's competition for good deals like this. They may know, or at least they should assume that you've got relationships with other wholesale buyers, other cash buyers than just them. So they need to act fast. So you always want to be supplying them with deals that you know they're going to want. They're always going to want to hear from you. That's just good business. I hope that helps. I'll share more with you in the next video.